Hi there. Tonight we're going to make a peg bot. One of those vibrating robots made with a vibrating motor. This one's taken out of a toothbrush. A peg, clothes peg. A couple of bits of wire. A couple of cable ties. A pair of pliers. A pair of cutters. A pair of uh, wire strippers, a couple of little bits of insulation, and some batteries. First thing we're going to do is strip a little bit off the wire, strip a little bit of the insulation off the wire. end of this wire I'm just folding a little loop of the in of the stripped wire it'll all become clear fairly soon The reason I'm using a peg is I've done quite a few of these vibrating bugs and one of the problems is how to mount the battery and how to have an on-off switch. So it came to me the other day, if I used a peg I could actually clip the battery in the peg. So all we're doing here is making a suitable metallic contact. There you go, once the hot glue's cooled down a bit. Hold the loops inside the peg, and that's going to be our electric contacts. There you go, one of those pill batteries, or whatever you want to call them, flat batteries, fits in there nicely. Takes all sizes. Next thing we want to do is connect the motor. Now I'm not quite sure where I want to fit the motor, so I'm not sure how long I need the wires. When you make these vibrating bots, it's all about balance as to whether they go forwards, backwards, or just go around in circles. So it's handy to have a bit of spare wire so you can change the position. couple of bits of insulation stripped off some thicker wire that I can use to cover over the solder joint in a minute. Just strip a little bit off the end. in the end of the wire, that's what this is called. Not a good idea to breathe that smoke. So should be doing this in a ventilated area. Would have been a good idea to have clamped this securely first wire is easy to do. Didn't 
didn't think this through properly before I did it. Simple answer, put something heavy on it, hold it still. There we go, that hold it still. slide those bits of insulation back over the bare joints. Quick demonstration. There you go. OK, now on to the cable ties. It actually occurred to me that these little bits at the end might be handy for making it look pretty at the end, so I save those bits. And bend them into a suitable shape. The thing about these plastic cable ties, if you squeeze them really hard in a bend, they save the shape. Not perfectly, but they give you a general idea. Thought I might have a go at an eight-legged bug this time. Again, using the pliers to give it a good hard squeeze. shape this time instead of just a straight a V. The actual length of the legs, I've made them generous because I actually have to trim them a little bit later on try and make sure the bug goes in the right direction. quite sure why I struggle so much doing this. The first one was easy. The rest of them I seem to struggle with, as you can see. There you go. 
four pairs of legs. Well, I've stuck them together with hot glue, they should look something like this. As I said earlier, I'm not quite sure where to stick the motor to get the balance. Those of you who pay attention to this will notice that I'm sticking it on this end at the moment. When you see the finished article, it's actually on the other end. It's just a matter of balance to get the best movement out of the bug. adding a bit of decoration I guess you could call it okay quick trip to the paint shop out to the garage I have a bit of gold spray paint there. So that's why it looks gold. And if you notice it, you'll see I've stuck the vibrating motor on the other end to get the balance. And that's it. Job done.